Hello everyone, welcome to my lecture on topic 2 of unit 3 that is production function with two variables. The production function with two variables and the variables for concentration here are land and capital. In the previous concept we have already learned about the production function with the single variable that is only variation uh, and uh, increasing the labor inputs and observe the relevant output that we have that has, it has delivered. In this concept we will study labor and capital as variable factors, labor and capital as variable factors. Labor and capital are the two main inputs to produce a given quantity of output and mathematically it is represented, it has a two variable production function is represented as Q is equal to F of C and L. This both C and of labor and capital are can be substituted to one another to produce a desired level of output. If one factor is increased, the other factor is decreased and vice versa. More capital is used for capital intensive products and more labor is used for labor intensive products. It can be illustrated with the help of a two different concepts that is isoquant and isocost curves which helps us to understand this production function with two variables. Now the, here it is a graphical representation of this isoquant curves with two variables, change in two variables that is capital and labor. Iso means equal, quant means quantity. Isoquant curves shows the level of output with this, uh, with, uh, with uh, output at every point on the given isocont curve. In this diagram, the isocont curve shows all the combination of labor and capital that can be produced. Total output of 4000 units, that is the total production output is 4000 units here. In this isocont, it should be achieved through, there's a various combinations just for our understanding, we have referred few figures here, right? now. Uh, capital and labor 20 units of capital and 18 units 18 units of labor 9 units of capital and 35 units of labor here now this here uh, in the when coming to the graph we are representing labor on the x axis and capital on the y axis for 20 units of capital 18 units of labor is employed for 20 units of capital 18 units of labor is employed similarly for 9 units of capital, 35 units of labor is employed. So as to derive at this 44,000 units of total output. Right? The isoquant curves are usually convex to the convex to the origin because they will be in a, since they are inversely proportional, that is capital if capital is increased, labor is decreasing. If labor is increasing, capital is decreasing due to that reason it gives rise to a convex curve like this sloping downwards from left to right and if at all if the if the firm wants to increase the production from this 4000 capacity to at a higher level let us assume at 5000 5000 then it will give rise to another curve here let us assume the same curve related to 4000 when the output is increased. Similarly, when the input is increased, when the input is increased, the curve will be falling below the actual curve. Let us assume this is as TPP is equal to 3000. So, when the output is increased, it gives rise to another curve just above up, upward to the original curve and if it, the total output is decreased, it gives rise to another curve which falls below the actual 4000 uh, 4, indicating curve. So here this this is uh, this results through this uh, with this we can analyze that there will be a parallel to one another. This curves will be parallel to one another without touching x axis or y axis. If we want to increase the production, the isocon will shift either upwards either upwards or downwards. If it is decreased, it will be downwards. If it is increased, it will be upwards. So whatever may be the combination of 20, uh, this combination as well as this combination will give rise to the same 
4000 units of output so that is why it is known as a isoquant that is iso equal quantity with a, with any combination that is opted by the firm next one is iso cost curves iso means equal cost means the cost of production that is incurred and iso cost curves represent the cost of the uh, product, product with the and it will be same at any point on the same iso cost curve here in terms of uh, uh, values it is represented labor on the x axis and capital on the y axis instead of units it is represented in this value or word and iso cost curve shows all the combination of factors that cost the same to the okay, same to employ in this example if we employ 30 units of 30 k capital and 30 labor the total cost will be 4 lakhs 4 lakhs rupees if we employ 10 units of capital and 50 units of labor the total cost again would be 4 lakhs without any change in it the cost will be same at any point on the curve one combination is giving rise to point one point here on the curve, cost point cost curve and another combination is giving this point on the cost curve which is falling on the same cost line so the cost will be the same at any point on the same curve it will be if we want to increase the production the curve will shift upwards to the right if it is if the cost is increased to 5 lakhs this will be another curve if the if the cost is decreased to 3 lakhs the another curve will be falling down uh, beneath the actual uh, curve line if we want to increase the production the curve will shift upwards to the right they slope downwards from left to right since as i told you i told you they are inversely um, they are substituted one with the another parallel to one another and the least combination of inputs is another concept which gives an idea of exact combination of these both inputs with which gives maximum output with a minimum cost so that one point is to be has to be decided by the firm and that decision will be made with the help of this particular concept that is least cost combination of inputs with the help of the iso cost and iso cost curves the producer can find out optimum com co combination optimum combination is with less inputs it has to aim at it has to get a maximum output and the yeah, of input the cost him very less if we superimpose iso quant curves these are iso quant curves and these are iso cost curves the superimposing super mega iso quant curves on iso cost curves the point where iso quant curve is just tangential to the cost curve this is the point of tangency when you are superimposing one on the one curve on the another so this point of tangency determines the least combination of inputs of both the labor as well as uh, capital as well as the labor here at this point the cost of production will be very less the cost of production will be very less and and helps the producer to maximize the profit is it is which is illustrated in the diagram right if other than the, this uh, this combination which is identified with the help of this tangency by tangential point by superimposing these two curves it is the total cost is 4000 and the total output will be a uh, uh, sorry total cost is 4 lakhs and the total output is 4000 units right if we take this particular point into consideration that will give him a maximum profits with a minimum cost for the producer long run production function and returns to scale now all this concepts which we have studied earlier that is 
production function with one variable and production function with two variables are the situations in a short run period of a firm short run period of operation of a firm and this where few factors are variable and another factors are kept constant that was the main condition that is applicable for a short run period whereas in a long run production in a long run period all factors of production are variable that is the factors what we are considering for the purpose here is land labor capital organizational technology all will be varied proportionately it shows the relationship between input and output in the long run if we increase the inputs the output increases at a faster rate in the beginning remains constant for a certain period of time and if more and more doses are added up uh, output starts decreasing so that is how it functions as you keep on increasing the inputs it gives it it, it increases to a um to a increases very high as well as um, thereby it attains a constant phase and later on it it attains a it starts decreasing so the long run production function will be studied with with the, in three stages that is first stage is increasing returns second stage is constant returns third stage is decreasing returns in increasing returns output increases more than more than proportionate change in the uh, sorry output increases more than proportionate change in the inputs that is returns are more than the inputs or cost whereas in constant returns change change in the output will be equal to the proportionate change in the input that is r is equal to k returns will be equal to the cost decreasing returns change in output will be less than the proportionate change in the inputs the change in the is less than the proportionate change in the inputs that is returns are less than capital that is employed returns will be less than the cost this is how the long run production function will be analyzed which is represented in the this a graph here input uh, input on the x axis and output on the y axis and the production function is q is equal to function of labor in terms of uh, returns as well as uh, labor and the capital which give rise to the desired results in the long run period with this the session we'll end up the session here thank you